Hello and welcome back to the channel. This time for Prime Cuts, for some reason I decided to revisit the awful world of 70s British sex comedies. This time we have Adventures of a Taxi Driver, uh, 1976, which was the first in the Adventures of series. It starts with an amusing enough little montage that kind of satirises taxi drivers, you know, talking about how friendly and kind they are and showing obviously the exact opposite. We then meet uh, Barry Evans as Joe North, who is our lead character in his awful home life, uh, living with his mum. He is presented to us as a kind of cheeky, lovable chap that we're supposed to get behind. But in fact, he is just an awful, awful person. It's fair to say that this entire film just has really awful sexual politics and treats its female characters just horrendously. Uh, take, for example, this first woman who is getting a taxi to a London bridge so she can throw herself off it and commit suicide. Uh, Joe talks her down and then immediately starts taking advantage of her. Uh, then we discover that she has a boyfriend that she's fighting with. Uh, so Joe makes his excuses uh, and leaves. But during this exchange, we basically find out that that woman's boyfriend is just horrendously abusive to her in an emotional way. It's just so horrible. Then the fact that makes Joe truly awful is we meet his fiance. This man has a fiance and he still goes around basically sleeping with everybody he meets. And we're supposed to think that this is a fun guy that we should follow and support. It's just, it's just mind boggling. Like who was writing this? How, how in the seventies was this viewed as being okay? It's just bizarre. Uh, and of course the fiance plays basically into the three types of women that this film presents. Uh, she fits into the nagging, bossy category, the sort of, you know, shrew. Uh, then we have the women who are basically there just to be taken advantage of uh, in various different ways. And then the third category pretty much is just women who are really promiscuous and just basically sleep with a man as soon as they encounter them. It's just such an awful portrayal of women throughout the entire film. Anyway, you know, Joe goes to the local sort of calf where he gets ribbed a bit about him sleeping around with everybody. Um, and then we cut to a apparently amusing sequence where he's with this woman who is a stripper. So she has a snake uh, and during this encounter it's implied that the snake has come out of the basket and you can probably guess uh, what's going on there. But the whole film really is these sequences that don't really knit together. There's not really an ongoing plot. Uh, there is some little bits in here about the person that Joe sort of shares a flat with and his brother being criminals. That plays into it a little bit at the end, but there's no there's no real ongoing story throughout the film. It's just a sequence of sketches essentially loosely strung together. Um, so this bit, for some reason, Joe is acting as a postman, even though he's a taxi driver, uh, and brings this woman a parcel. She's getting ready for a party uh, or something like that, offers him a drink. Then, of course, we cut to the, oh, can you help me try this dress on sequence? You know, zip me up, please, and all that. And the dress doesn't fit properly and falls away. And then you can pretty much like the other sequences, guess where it goes from, from there. And this being a 70s production that was aimed at mainline cinemas, of course the sexy bits really aren't all that sexy. So if that's what you're looking for in this film, you're not going to find it here. So then we're on to our main character going to pick up the uh, woman, this woman that he knows from the strip club uh, and it's worth pointing out that he knows her through his housemate uh, so when he hits on her you know she's already going out with somebody else so 
it's just further evidence that he is just a scummy guy. Anyway, one of the other women who work at the works at the club comes home, uh, and Joe insists that they play inverted commas sexy games, so they do spin the bottle, and this ends up with him and the other woman getting naked, and then they go and have sex with each other and of course in the middle of that his fiance arrives and gets angry rightfully why he is still his fiance i don't get it because apparently he constantly cheats on her again it's that baffling depiction of women that's that is horrendous throughout the whole film then we have a sequence with the housewife who can't find her keys so joe helps her out by climbing through a window up a ladder coaches her up the ladder because she's afraid of heights and then everybody gets covered in paint because the bedrooms are being painted so there's the oh no we're all covered in paint we need to get clean so they go and have a bath together because of course that's what you do you wouldn't have sort of separate showers and again we get another husband arrives home scenario so our cheeky chappy apparently has to run uh, and then whilst he's half naked he has to drive a nun around because haha <laughs> nuns are funny or something uh, constantly the, these kind of fourth wall broking moments where he talks to camera that helps pad things out a bit then there's this odd little sequence where at first it seems like some criminals have jumped into his cab and are kidnapping uh, a woman but this all turns out to be some kind of pointless elaborate joke so this sequence really doesn't go anywhere at all um, which is a strange choice because the very kind of next section is again more criminals getting into the car uh, but this time they really are committing a robbery and they force Joe to drive them away and he drives them to what turns out to be a garage run by his mate, flatmate. There's then kind of a sequence that's fairly elaborate and it's supposed to be funny where the police come round and they're all desperately trying to hide the fact that they've stolen these jewels uh, and then in a complete non-climax it turns out that Joe gets away with it but everybody else goes to prison and he was just visiting at the end there. Uh, so, in conclusion, there's no structure, the film's not funny, the film's not sexy, it has horrendous sexual politics, it has horrendous depictions of women, it has aged awfully in case you couldn't tell, there's nothing of any value here, and it's just mind-blowing to me that these films were massive hits back in the day. Just, just don't watch them. Anyway, I'll see you again soon for some more Crime Cuts.